Ellen. Hello everyone and welcome back to Show and Tell. Yes, this is a knitting podcast. We talk about vintage knitting and today I happen not to be wearing mitts, but I'm wearing a vintage satin robe and my little boudoir slippers that I've had for as long as I can remember. We will get into some knitting, but first I wanted to do some housekeeping. Typically we talk about vintage knitting, but I do have a lot of other interests, as those of you who have been watching for a while know. So sometimes, in addition, we get into talking about gastronomy, astronomy, science, mathematics, architecture, travel. You never know with my podcast where things might lead us. We will talk about knitting today, however, so don't be put off. Um, I'm dressed like this partly for you, but also because just after this, I'm going to be on a Zoom call with a bunch of vintage lingerie lovers. So I'm, I'm ready to go right from here. Um, before I forget, I want to tell you where else you can find me on the interwebs. So I'm on Ravelry as Billy Toy, and I'll put that on the screen. I'm also on Instagram as Billy Toy. And those are the ones that are most important for you to know. The funny thing about YouTube is YouTube does these subtitles automatically for you. And depending on how complicated your podcast is, it may take hours, it may take days. My Brazilian guest, it took YouTube at least three or four days. I think because her accent was so different from mine, it was very confused. And in my podcast, we tend to have a lot of technical terms like pearl, which is not spelled P-E-A-R-L, the conventional way. Or once I mentioned, somebody said that they're using peacock blue yarn that they thought was reminiscent perhaps of the Egyptian craze and I mentioned the name Tutankhamun. YouTube transliterated that as T-W-O, the number two, ton as in weight, two ton, common as in the common era. So I go through those typically and I try and sort out. But if someone is speaking with a different accent or they use foreign expressions that YouTube is not accustomed to, it does take a little while. So bear with me, sometimes those subtitles aren't up right away. I don't have to tell you what a crazy year 2020 was. I know all of you lived through it just as I did. One of the really upsides of the pandemic has been that a lot of us have been able to do a significant amount of knitting because we're confined to our homes. So I took stock of my knitting and determined that my number of sweaters increased from 6 to 14, or 133%. And down below in the description, I will put links where you can see on Ravelry the different sweaters that I completed during the pandemic thus far, or at least in 2020. The gray ruffle sweater that has the ruffle collar and cuffs a gray cashmere cardigan, the navy pullover with the ruching, it's called engineered seams, the red sweater with the birds going around, the lavender lace, the um, multicolor, it's called marl dish, it hasn't been released yet, the white charisse with the gray piping, and the magenta coat evening at Edinburgh. So that's eight more sweaters so far in this pandemic. In terms of my works in progress, let me grab this for you. Um, I did a whole episode on Thelma by Countess Furness, the sweater that I'm daring to design. Um, so let me show you where I'm at so far. I will do another entire episode to show how all these parts come together. It's going to have dolman sleeves. The back is completed. So here's the sleeve. It's an unusual shape. And there will be ribbing. So the sleeve will actually end up being longer than what you currently see. 
that's the back. Then the front is in three parts. Oops, I'm having a wardrobe malfunction, a serious wardrobe malfunction here. Latoya Jackson, or Janet Jackson, whoever that was, uh, move over. <laughs> okay, this is the lower part of the front. And coming up out of that will be orientation right um, two panels this is my left side panel going all the way down the sleeve and then there'll be a mirror image of this which ah, I have all my little uh, bobbles hanging not bobbles um, bobbins hanging here so I don't know if you can see that it's striped with wool and mohair alternating and hopefully when it's against my skin it will be sheer you'll be able to see anyway I'll, I'll do a whole episode on the completion of that um, but for 2021 I've decided to call it the year of Fifi F-I-F-I -F -I standing for finish it first. I still have things from way back that have never been completed. And I've been really making a concerted effort to finish something or some things before I start something new. So I wanted to walk you through some of the projects that I hope to complete in this year. So I've shown you this in a prior episode. It looks like it's complete. It's the V-back T. And once upon a time when I showed this, the V-neck was very narrow. Now when I put it on, it just slides right off my shoulders. So the thing, it's made of cotton. It has stretched a lot, even before I've ever worn it. So I'm afraid I'm going to fry this entire thing and start afresh. Now, I have knit an entire sweater previously with this yarn, and once it was complete and I tried it on, I didn't like how it hung on me. I didn't like the draping. So this is a little bit of a nightmare. I probably won't revisit this until later on when the weather gets warmer, but I anticipate that in 2021, this will be a wearable garment. Another project that I've been working on for a while is this lace jacket. I already have my buttons for it. I saw these last year at Vogue Knitting Live, and I thought they coordinated so perfectly with the color and the feel of my sweater that I just had to go ahead and buy these while I saw them. So this is a case of a poorly written pattern. I feel. So as an example, here's the um, where the sleeve would be set in. There aren't enough stitches here to do a full pattern repeat, so I didn't know what to do, and I just did stockinette because somebody on Ravelry had suggested that, but I really do not like how that looks. So I'm in the process of pulling this back and kind of redoing that. That's the back. And then I have both fronts done. I don't know if you're able to see this. So that's a front. And I think I have part of the sleeves. Yes, I had also run out of wool. Fortunately, um, this second dye lot is similar enough and this pattern is busy enough with all this lace I don't think you'll be able to detect, to detect any color difference so I'm you know well on with both the sleeves I don't know if any of you have this problem maybe you could comment below you get to a point where you're stuck it's just not coming out the way you want and you get fed up with it and you put it aside well I've put this aside more than once it's really hard to come back to something like this to sort of like you lose momentum. 
it's not that you forget where you are in the pattern so much as your mojo is just sort of, you feel deflated, defeated. But because I have the buttons, I'm committed to finishing this. I think it will be smashing when it's done. Um, so 2021, Fifi, for that. Hold on, let me go grab some more projects to show you. I know I've told you about this yarn that a friend of mine had given me and I didn't think I was going to have enough to complete this scarf for my son. But as it turns out, I had plenty of yarn. However, I waited until the people in Germany who had the same exact dye lot, because here it would matter. I waited until the price of shipping came down and the countries lifted their um, restrictions. And I went ahead and I ordered a bunch more. I way over ordered. So at his request, I made a balaclava for him. So if you've never seen a balaclava, it, it goes around the neck like a cow would be. And this completely surrounds the head like a hood and a cowl all connected. And he asked me to actually make the face a little bit higher so it comes up really only this part of his face will be showing more or less. At some point I'll have him model these and I'll get pictures and they'll be on my Ravelry project page. And then since I still had plenty of yarn and this is actually still a work in progress, um, I am doing convertible mittens for him. which as you can see, I am knitting two at a time on circular needles uh, using the magic loop method. Well, this is looking like a mess. Let me untangle this a little bit. Um, these are not my chow goos, so these cords are not as cooperative as the chow goo cords, but I'm not using my chagoos because my chagoos are in use for some of my other projects. Anyway, um, I haven't done the thumb yet. And this flips open if you need to use your touch phone or whatever, touch screen. So I tried to do a similar, oh, I have it on backwards. This is the other hand, but I tried to do a similar motif to what I have in the scarf, that little gathering, little pucker. Let me show you the pattern in the scarf again up close. I can hold it still for you. See, it's pretty. Also because of shipping issues, I had knit this baby sweater. It's not totally finished. I haven't woven in the seams, but I knit this at the very beginning of the pandemic for my cousin in France who had her first grandbaby, and I put the little guy's initials on here. I uh, double stitched over the top, but at this point, I don't know if it's possible to ship it, but even if it is, I'm sure he's outgrown this by now, so I'll probably pick this out and save it for another baby. So another project that's been lingering for a while, a couple of years as a matter of fact, is this garment, which I'm, I sort of am designing as I'm going along. It's not from a specific pattern. Um, if you're not familiar with Log Cabin, although those of you who are quilters and who sew, you may have heard of Log Cabin. It's a historic type of a pattern. It starts with a square in the center, and then you go along one edge and do a panel that's the same width and half of the height. And then, like a pinwheel, you keep going around, just doing the same width and that constant height. And Again, the same width of all the 
previous pieces and this way and this way and you keep going around until you have the square. I made four of these. One for the left front, left back, right front, right back. And I kept this one unassembled so it would be easy to show it to you. The rest of my garment is somewhat assembled. Let me see if I scooch back if you can see any of it. So that's front with sleeve. Here's the other front with sleeve. And I have both of those love patterns in there. And then in the back, I'm still missing the back of this. So I only have one half of the lower back uh, done. Um, I was using some new yarns that I purchased, Cascade, I think it's Cascade 220, and uh, the, all these bright colors, and this is a Malabrigo in there. I'll put a link to my Ravelry page so you can check out all the specifics. Um, It's not done. I definitely want the sleeves to be longer. And when I finished the shawl collar, I felt like it wasn't as wide as I would like it to be. So right now I'm adding on with this very old yarn that I've had kicking around since I'm a kid. It's really old fashioned type of wooly wooly yarn. Um, and this whole thing is gonna be embellished with bits of this crazy stuff it's going to be a statement piece. <laughs> um, I took inspiration from a couple of other patterns, but it's my own mashup of those. And it's something that I hope to continue to work on as 2021 unfolds. Um, the last thing that is not finished, and I have really been procrastinating, um, one of my very early episodes in this podcast was about this 1940s pattern that um, I showed I showed all the different parts of it and how it all got assembled. Uh, let me see if I can finally get it. I, I don't have buttons for it yet. I don't have the belt. Um, here's the front and Here's one of the sleeves. Let me show you that pattern up close. It's an interesting little, sort of like a one, a two stitch cable. And then there are these patch pockets that go on the front, the lower front. That was down here. So I have some assembly to do here. It's really not a lot, but I'm kind of stalled because I'm not sure about how the sleeve should exactly be set in. And as I mentioned, I'm still missing a few accessory parts. If you have trouble completing projects, I would love to hear in your comments below what it is that stalls you. For me, it's there's either something in the pattern that I'm unsure of what did the designer really mean or it's badly written or it hasn't been well tested um, this particular one there's no designer to go back to because it's a vintage pattern so I can't query that person I have queried um, at least one or two designers in the past about things um, but that that's one thing that trips me up another thing is running out of yarn um, but I'd love to hear from you what it is that sets you back, that makes you put something in a timeout or um, on pause. So you might have noticed that I'm trying out a new combination here. I'm in a different location, of course, but I'm using a new light. I'm using my smartphone instead of uh, my digital camera. And sometimes, you know, I'm on Zoom, then it's really blurry. I'm finding the light a little bit blinding. I'll have to work on that. It also maybe washes me out a little. Anyway, I hope this was a little bit of a 
change from some of my more recent episodes. I've showed you a lot more of my knitting and I know in 2021 there'll be more knitting to come. Um, I'm waiting for some yarn to arrive to start another project, but I'm trying to be really a good girl and finish more things before I start new. So next time I see you, hopefully one of these will be either complete or nearly complete. Signing off. See you next time. Happy 2021. Welcome to a brand new year, which I hope will be fantastic for everyone. Bye. See you.